Welcome to Mount Prospect Public Library's Library Life. I'm Kathy Cushing. Today we'll jump into a spectacular performance by the Rope Warrior. We'll also discover the fun and useful objects teens can create using recycled materials. And on that note, we'll visit with an interior designer who'll show us how to turn trash into treasure. But first, let's discover the magic of this year's summer reading program. This summer, the Mount Prospect Public Library is inviting patrons of all ages to discover the magic intrinsic to a good story. This year, we invite our participants to discover the magic in reading. And we chose that partly because it had such broad application across ages, across different types of literature. There can be romance, there can be science fiction, there can be horror, action adventure. There's just a little dusting of magic or fantasy, and actually just the whole idea that any book is magic for the reader. Reader's Advisory Librarian Kathleen Blair explains the steps to completion for those 18 and over who register for the program here at the Fiction AV Teen Desk. Adults this year are going to have a chance to choose their own version of the program. They'll be completing a grid, and it has a step where they choose to read a fiction book, a non-fiction book, watch a movie, and then try something a little bit new, perhaps in, uh, in fantasy or magic. But if they're really not interested in that, they can learn a magic trick, and they can show that to us. Enchanting prizes await those who experience the literary magic the Adult Services Program provides. For the first 150 adult participants who complete a round, which would be four steps, they will earn a, an insulated tote. And then the drawings, each round will enter into a drawing. There's a Samsung Galaxy tablet that is available. There is a $50 gift card to Mariano's along with a picnic basket. And there's also a $50 gift card to Pesci's with a garden tote. One of the other things that's new this year is that participants can choose which drawing they'd like to be a part of. So if they'd like to put all of their chances in for one of those prizes, they may, or they may spread those out and get a little bit of everything. Over in the teen zone, young adults are reaping the rewards of summer reading in a number of ways. Just by reading whatever they like during the summer, watching TV, movies, listening to music or audiobooks, teens can come into the library, participate in the teen summer reading program, and they'll win prizes every week, and then we'll have grand prizes at the end of the program too. This year, when teens come into the library to register for the program, they'll shake the magic eight ball like we have here, and then they'll figure out which registration prize they get, which can be an advanced reader copy of a book, an audio book, a magic eight ball pen, or some of our great coupon packets that have been donated by local businesses. Here, everything teens read, including books required for school, gets them closer to winning some great prizes. When they register, they'll get a log, and in the log there'll be four different check-ins, and each check-in will be comprised of maybe two to three different activities that involve reading books, watching TV or movies, as well as listening to something. We'll also have an end step of writing a review about a book or a movie that they really enjoyed. They can complete as many logs as they like after that to be entered into our grand prize drawings, as well as our weekly gift card drawings. There will be a guess how many contests, just like we have every year during our summer reading program. And this year it's going to be guess how many everlasting candies. Whoever gets the closest guess or is spot on, then they'll win the candies as well as a gift card. Let's face it, what child doesn't love the spellbinding magic of a wonderful story? And the Youth Services Department nurtures this love of reading on a variety of levels. Because we serve children from birth all the way up through age 11, and there's such a wide range of reading levels, some kids are reading on their own, some are being read to. Um, so instead of counting a certain number of books or a certain number of hours, this year we're just encouraging people to read every day. And they can set their own goals for maybe 20 minutes a day, maybe an hour a day, or a chapter a day. Um, and then they just count each day that they read and they'll get prizes after every 10 days that they read. Prizes here encourage youngsters to enjoy their summer reading journey while reaching their goals. We do have different sets of prizes. We have one set for children under age two, a sticker, we have applesauce, we have bubbles, and we have some little uh, rubber duckies and we also have board books and picture books if they complete they get a free book and then for the older kids we have bookmarks fruit snacks 
and we're bringing back Smencils this year because the kids really love those. And those kids also can choose a free book at a variety of levels. Also something else new this year is a bonus round on the reading log where we encourage you to discover some other activities such as attending a library program, doing the QR scavenger hunt, um, or acting out a story that you're reading and you get a bonus prize for that. If you would like to discover the magic of Mount Prospect Public Library's 2014 Summer Reading Program, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. With summer just around the corner, it's time to sharpen our treasure hunting skills in the somewhat seasonal realm of garage sales and flea markets. Joining me today on Library Live to discuss her library event, Trash to Treasure, is interior decorator Rhody Hausauer. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's start out, Rhody, by talking a little bit about your background in the field of interior design. Well, I've been doing this for 23 years already. So, um, and I always like to say that I'm a little different than a lot of the other designers that are out there because I specialize in creative design solutions on a budget. Mm. So I like to take things, items that people already own and repurpose them and make them beautiful again and relevant to today's decor wherever possible. Okay, tell us a little bit about the premise behind your Trash to Treasure. I'm thinking it's pretty much pretty close to that, right? Yes, exactly. Um, and it basically it's the idea of looking at things in somebody's home um, or something that uh, somebody has in their own home um, and, and something that they, they see some value in it, they, they like the picture, they like the piece of furniture, but they're really not sure that it works with the, with the new color palette of today's colors. Um, and so in the Trash of Treasure I talk about some products um, different techniques that people can take that they just buy at a hardware store and uh, can transform pieces and make them fit into their new decor and get another 10 years of or 15 years of life out of them. Information that anybody could use. Anybody can do this. All right, let's look at some of the examples that you brought with you today. Okay. Now, we, we're looking right now at a white desk. Yes. What did you do here? Well, this was a, a desk that was a beautiful desk from 1947. Mm. Um, it was in a hotel, um, but it had been through many uh, years of use and of people trying to update it in different ways um, that they saw fit. Um, and as you can tell, did not really do that good of a job. Um, when they put new handles on, they drilled holes and didn't really make sure that the new holes were covered up by, oh. um, you know, the new handles. So this kind is of a hatchet job, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And so this is an example of taking that same desk, right. just sp I spray painted it with spray paint from the hardware store, um, and then used a back plate that you can buy on the internet. Um, there's great websites that have all kinds of knobs uh, knobs and back plates and um, you know the back plate is a great idea because it's a separate piece of metal that you can lay over the top of where the old holes are and then put your new knob through it and it covers up a lot of sins that previous owners did. And you look at this and this is a beautiful um, resurrection. Oh, um, yes. it, it, you know, with the crystal knobs on it, just absolutely stunning. Now let's go to the next one. And here we have a lovely headboard. This is a great do-it-yourself project. I mean, it, it takes just a little bit of carpentry skills, but most anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. I think most of the time, um, carpentry skills get a little bit more hairy if you have to do crown moldings where you take corners, inside corners, outside corners. But this is an example of the headboard was made using leftover wood from a hardwood flooring installation. My goodness. So the cherry in the background is um, just hardwood flooring that was laid on a piece of plywood and nailed right into the plywood. Oh. Um, and then the white areas are just uh, one by sixes um, that you made a three-sided box with. Um, and then the rest of it is just baseboard turned upside down to make uh, the finishing um, caps across the uh, on the posts um, with a straight run of a crown molding across the top with another piece of one by six on top of the crown molding to make a shelf. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. And, and again, you did this by yourself? Yes, yes, yes. For oh, heaven's sake. <laughs> yes, that's, yes. That's great. And, and, and actually, to that picture, um, the wall decor on the back, those stars, mm -hmm. are just rubber stamped on the wall. Oh my. 
No, that, using that paint. is a beautiful, beautiful setting. I love that. All right, and here, I love this. Tell, tell us the story about this table here. This is a great story. I had a contractor one time come to my house and he said he knew what I did. And um, he said, you know, I've got this extra table. He said, it's, it's half of a dining room table. And he didn't know what to do with it, but he said I, he knew that I would. So what I did was I stenciled it. Mm -hmm. It's a half of an old Queen Anne dining room table. Um, it, once you slide the leaves apart, you know, you've got two ends. If you'd have both ends, it would make a great uh, bedside tables or a, you know great living room tables mm -hmm. um, but I stenciled them and then just polyurethaned over the top of it um, and created a beautiful side table um, that anybody could do again. Of course and that brings us to my next question which is the tools of the trade. Now you obviously have this table attached to the wall in some way so yes. let's, let's look at some of the tools of the trade that you feel are pretty much a must. A must, exactly. Okay. Well, there's two items that I love to use, and these you buy from the hardware store. Mm -hmm. um, and these are dual purpose. One is if a piece is a little bit rickety, mm -hmm. these are braces. Um, right. This is a brace and this is an L bracket. Um, and when you put these, you can strengthen furniture. So like imagine this on chairs, on the legs of chairs, and right. it automatically strengthens chairs. I also use this for that old dining room, that half of a dining room table, because I put the L brackets on the back side of the uh, table and then you could screw it right into the wall. So it is, in essence, gave two back feet to the table, whereas the table already had the two front feet. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about paint yes. and, and how paint can really totally reinvent your, your piece. Exactly, exactly. Okay, well I have two um, things that I'd like to talk about. Um, one is um, a product out on the market and it's called a gel stain. Okay, gel stain. Gel stain. And what I love about these is they're actually made for outdoor use um, mm -hmm. on fiberglass front doors. Okay. Um, but this pretty much sticks to anything. Um, and so I'll use several different colors just because when you look at a piece of wood, you always see different tones. You know, there's highlights and lowlights to a piece of wood. Right. So instead of just using one color, which ends up kind of looking like just paint, mm -hmm. um, I'll use a couple of different colors, sometimes even three colors, using the same old rag, just dip it right into the can and brush it on to, uh, paint it on with rags, and then I take a dry brush and kind of go over it and it gives it a faux, paint or a faux grain look, I My should goodness. say, a faux grain. But what I love about this product is you can take old pieces of furniture um, that look really tired um, and need a, 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 fresh, a fresh look um, and just take old rags and wipe it over um, whatever p the surface is and then seal it with a polyurethane on top and you have a whole new look. Mm. a whole new look and it brings it back to um, just a beautiful luster. I especially like this product too on the old 1990s pickled oak Okay, of course. Woodwork, yes. Um, because it can be very expensive uh, for clients to have that all stripped down to nothing. Mm -hmm. So what, what I have had clients do is um, lightly sand their railings, okay, like think of a staircase. Right. They'll lightly sand the railings. You don't have to strip it all the way down because, again, this stuff sticks to anything. Mm -hmm. um, it sticks to metal. It sticks to plastic. It sticks to fiberglass. It's amazing how, how it adheres. But... Um, you lightly sand your, your railings and then you brush this on. Once you polyurethane over it, it changes that pickled oak look to whatever color you want it to be, cherry or, you know, whatever color the, of the stain you picked so out. So you don't necessarily have to paint over something. You can, you can just stain over it. You can and, stain and over it and it keeps it, it a nice. wood color. And I tell clients all the time, you know, this is not a forever fix. Right. But when clients look at something um, and they have a budget, and they can't afford to have something totally stripped down to bare wood and start over. I mean, this is a good fix. It's a Band-Aid fix that will get you at least 10 years. Now, you were talking to me before we started shooting about uh, possibly uh, transforming something like a mirror or a, a picture frame or even a poster yes. into something that is totally different. Yes, I, I love this technique. Everybody has this in their house. Um, shoe polish. Ah black shoe polish. If you take black shoe polish and you take an item like a picture frame, 
Mm -hmm. or a mirror or whatever it is and you know this is a picture frame from the 1970s right um, and but it's a this that bright gold and maybe people don't really want that anymore right um, you, if you just take shoe polish um, and you wipe over it right. um, and it it will antique it mm -hmm. and all of a sudden then you've got that black and very pale gold look and Isn't once shoe polish dries mm -hmm. it dries like paint so you can dust it, you can polish it, it won't come off. Right. Well, that's a wonderful fix. Now, the other thing you, you mentioned was, was taking something like a poster yes. and putting something over it. Yes. Well, oftentimes people have uh, either posters or they'll even have artwork, oil paintings um, from maybe the 70s or the 80s where the colors are, if you think about the 1980s, you had those bright pinks and the right. seafoam greens. Mm -hmm. um, so what I like to do is just take basic stain um, and in like a, in a golden oak color. Right. And you take, and this is not a gel stain, this is the old fashioned liquid watery um, stain. Right. You stick a cloth in there and if you just wipe over your surface, and now in this case, like this is a real white background, uh -huh. um, if I would take a, a rag and dip this in here and just smear over this, it will turn it a parchment color and make it look old world. Oh my. So this was a poster that I bought on clearance rail at a craft store for three dollars and I could turn this into a very beautiful old looking picture. I've done this also with oil paintings where I just wipe it right over an oil painting and uh. it darkens it up and changes those seafoam green colors to more of your sage and your olive colors that are in style right now. So many different ideas that you have. Um, let's talk a little bit about the paint that people people get a little bit nervous when it comes to picking up paint colors to yes. transform their their items yes um, what what do you suggest as far as that's concerned well there are some tricks that people don't necessarily know about with uh, paint decks and certainly when you look at a paint deck something like this this would scare off anybody to think oh my gosh how do I pick the right color here mm -hmm. um, but there's little tricks that if you know how these paint decks are designed it helps somebody make their selections much easier um, one of them is some of the different different paint brands will um, carry a paint deck where the entire paint deck is designed so that the colors all match each other mm -hmm. and all work together. Right. So anybody can take one of these decks and if you already know you want a blue or you already know you want a green, you're going to know that these automatically are going to work together. So it makes selecting paint colors a lot easier when you already know they're going to match. Right. All right. So that's one option um, that I love about um, some of the paint uh, brands. Uh, they make it easier for people. The other is um, on a big paint deck too, there are brands that will um, you can see my paint deck. I've got a whole section my that goodness. you can tell uh -huh. is well loved compared right. to the rest. And that's because this entire section um, are the historical collection colors or the American classic colors. And so what I like to do is go there first mm -hmm. because these all have the right undertones. Right. These are colors that have been in style for the last 100 years and are going to be in style for the next 100 years. And so I always start here and if I can't find the color then I'll go to the rest of the paint deck. Right, right. But this takes it and narrows down your paint deck from this wide to this wide. Very interesting. I've got to tell you I could sit here and talk to you probably for hours, <laughs> uh, but unfortunately we're running out of time. Any tips for novices with regard to transforming their furniture? Well, the one thing I would always tell clients is it's only paint. Right. What do you have to lose? And if the item was going to go in the garbage or you know, you know, or, or make an attempt to do something with it, um, you have nothing to lose. So to have courage. Have courage and go ahead and, and do it. Um, but look for pieces that, you know, have some architecture to them, have mm -hmm. some interest to them. Um, those always make for a better uh, look in the end. Right. Um, but at the same time, don't worry if it's a little rickety because you can buy the braces and the L brackets at the hardware store to make them more sturdy. Uh, but using stencils or make your own stencils, you can create even something that's flat and unattractive and doesn't have a lot of detail. You can make it very attractive. But So I think it really is just have courage. Have courage and go for it. Perfect. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for having me. If you would like more information on Rhodey's program, Trash to Treasure, or any upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, call the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.com.
www.ghostofthecoast.org. Recreating old objects into something new can be invigorating. Let's peek in on a teen open creation session focusing on recycled crafts. Teens who enjoy the thrill of crafting now have the perfect venue with Mount Prospect Public Library's reoccurring open creation session. Craft and creation programs are the most popular programs in our library. So what we thought is what can we do that's a more broad um, interest that involves making and crafting and creation things. So we thought up this idea of what if we bring as much as we have, as many ideas as we have to just one program and just let teens decide what they want to make. And that's what happens with Open Creation. Today, teens are focusing on creating items from recycled materials in celebration of National Library Week and Earth Day. There's about eight different stations, so we have old books that are going to be withdrawn from our collection because they're in poor shape, so they can take those old books and create containers, decoupage with them, or make blackout poetry. Um, we have toys that have been donated by different people that they can take apart or upcycle with glitter and different things like that. Um, we have t-shirts that have also been donated as well as we get some from Goodwill sometimes and they can make bags and scarves and different creations with their t-shirts or maybe just make them a little bit neater that they can wear on their own. Um, so there's a lot of different ideas about what can they use everyday materials, um, things that they may not be using anymore and make things out of them. I'm making a shirt with buttons on it and I'm making it because I like doing interesting things and crafting stuff. I didn't have a journal at my house, so I decided to duct tape a journal. I've always kind of wanted a journal. Some people might not be so great at making jewelry, but they can really do a lot of good things with duct tape. So we like to give different options for different interests, as well as different skill levels. Um, and we just really want to put things out there so that they can make things. And it's always exciting to see things that you never thought of before. Materials provided include instructions on how to make everything from duct tape items to bejeweled treasures. We want to bring the books that we have from our collection and give them ideas because one of the hardest things when you do have so many options is what are you going to actually do. And we have a lot of great um, books up in the nonfiction collection for teens that will give them good ideas and have easy instructions for how to create things. After beginning nearly a year ago, these open creation sessions are a continuous draw for creative teens. I really like it, and they usually have other things like make things out of duct tape or origami and scrapbooking. I've lived in different places before and they've never done these before, so I really like this about this library. I like coming to these because there's a bunch of different crafts to make and I'm, I love crafts. Sometimes a makeover or lifestyle adjustment is just the thing to help a person get started on a better path. Here's Reader's Advisor Joyce Bratner with a best book pick on this very topic, Warming Up by Mary Hutchings Reed. Cecilia is talented but depressed and unsure of what to do with her life. Although she seeks professional therapy, the person who has the greatest impact on her is a homeless runaway teenager whom she befriends even though he conned her out of $60 and is often less than truthful. Although Cecilia is 40, it is a coming of age story as she attempts to recover from missteps in her life. She struggles with questioning her worth, abilities, and purpose, which are directly challenged by the self-assured teenager confronting issues of his own. The finely developed characters form a bond with the reader, giving the reader a feeling of knowing the character as persons. The well-crafted plot with its twists, secrets, and steady build up to the end makes the book a page turner. The warmth of the book and its satisfying outcome makes it a pleasure to read. Recommendations from the Adult Services Department this month are coming of age stories. In the Shipping News by Annie Pruel, a man works toward finding fulfillment in his life by returning to his hometown to face the issues and failures of his past. The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi follows the challenging journey of a teen who leaves his Indian reservation in his quest for a better education at an all-white high school in a nearby town. 
In Carmelo by Sandro Cisneros, a Chicago Latino girl faces struggles with conflicting identities after a family trip to Mexico underlines the differences in the two cultures she bridges every day. And for movie fans, Breaking Away is a classic film about four boys whose passion for bicycle racing helps them find themselves and prepare for life after high school. And in Big, a 12-year-old boy's wish to be big comes true when he wakes up one morning with an adult body and learns the gravity of his wish when he's suddenly thrown into the grown-up world. Recommendations from the Youth Services Department this month are summer reading picks about magic. In Goblin Secrets by William Alexander, a boy joins a theatrical troupe of goblins to find his missing brother. The Secret of Platform 13 by Eva Ibbotson centers around a strange group of magical creatures who travel through a hidden doorway into London in search of their missing prince. In The Magic Thief by Sarah Prineas, a boy becomes a wizard's apprentice after proving himself by picking up a potentially deadly magical stone. Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funk is a magical tale about a brave young dragon who sets out on a journey to find the mythical place where silver dragons can live forever in peace. And in Doll Bones by Holly Black, three friends embark on a quest to help free the spirit of a ghost trapped inside a china doll. Finally, here's Head of Youth Services, Mary Smith, with her best book pick from this department. Jinx by Sage Blackwood. Every child in Irwood Forest knows you never, ever wander off the path. So imagine six-year-old Jinx's terror when his stepfather abandons him there. Will he be eaten by trolls? Or torn apart by werewolves? Or maybe a witch will cast a spell on him. Luckily, he's found by a wizard named Simon who needs an assistant. Life as a wizard's apprentice isn't glamorous. There's the cleaning and the fetching and the cats, all 27 of them. But Simon doesn't seem dangerous, only very grumpy. Simon even decides to teach Jinx a little magic. The problem is even though Jinx knows four languages, can speak to trees and reads people's minds, he is absolutely helpless at learning spells. He can't even move the tiniest pebble with his mind or learn a concealment spell. It seems to Jinx he must be completely lacking in magical ability. So imagine Jinx's surprise when Simon casts a spell on him, making him collapse on the floor while his magic floats through the air in a golden ball for Simon to capture in a bottle. It turns out that Jinx did have magical ability, a special kind of forest magic that Simon has stolen for his own. Now Jinx must find Simon's sworn enemy to ask him for help. Will Jinx be able to get his magic back or will he just make things worse? Mount Prospect Public Library Super Saturdays give families the opportunity to experience the magic live entertainment provides. Here's a look at the high energy performance of the Rope Warrior. A popular reoccurring performer here at the Mount Prospect Public Library, David Fisher continues to amaze with his stimulating brand of entertainment. I started jumping rope about 26 years ago. I was a double-A volleyball player and started jumping the train for volleyball. And like I tell everybody, you know, just kind of fell in love with the sport because there's so many different fun, creative things that you can do with it. An author as well as an athlete, Fisher has three books to his credit. I have two science fiction books that I wrote a while ago, Adventures of the Rope Warrior. And uh, in the books, the rope warrior has a rope that's indestructible, so when he spins it fast enough, it creates a shield or force field around him. And uh, the new book, which is coming out in July, uh, is an instructional jump rope book. Now the rock and rope warrior, Fisher is introducing musical talent to the act. It's a new thing for me. I'm slowly making the transition from the rope warrior to the rock and rope warrior. And uh, I've been writing songs. What I learned about songwriting is that ideas for songs are around us every day, but now I know how to listen for them and I, I know how to watch for them. That's kind of my new passion. Fisher sings and swings his way through this interactive Super Saturday, inviting audience members to jump right in. 
with the audience members, we're going to do this thing called traveling, where six people line up, they just jump without the rope, and I come down the line and jump with each one. Um, after that, we do some partner jumping, where we take suggestions from the audience and work them out right there, kind of like jump rope improv. And finally, we do some double dutch. Having performed for presidential inaugurations and halftime shows, Fisher knows how to command the spotlight on a variety of stages, but enjoys coming back to the Mount Prospect Public Library. It's one of my favorite places to perform. Uh, we always have a great audience, and they always have a lot of energy, and it's, it makes my job easier. My goals are to show that fitness can be fun, a lifelong passion, and that no matter what athletic ability someone's at, uh, there are things that they can do to move around and stay active and just have fun with it. Super Saturday's The Rope Warrior is just one example of the many entertaining, informational, and educational events featured here at the Mount Prospect Public Library every month. Don't miss any library programs you'd like to experience. Here's a list of events scheduled in May and June. Reservations are strongly recommended. For more information regarding these events, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. You will also find a listing and description of all upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library events in your library newsletter preview. Today we have explored the many ways trash can become treasure. With this in mind, our Library Life camera today asks the question, what is your favorite recycled treasure and why? Here are some responses. It was a turbo oven that I bought for $20 at the Great Evanston garage sale. I turned it into a bookcase, but originally it was a wooden boat that my dad used to play with. That wraps up this edition of Library Life. For more information on any of the Mount Prospect Public Library services and events highlighted here, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. And don't forget to discover the magic of the 2014 Summer Reading Program, running June 1st through July 31st.